gospel train is a coming. I hear it just at hand. I hear the cop is a rumbling. Well, welcome to worship. Let's read together the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out on the people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Our mission is to seek God and serve others. A few announcements for you. On January 31st, from 9 to 2 p.m., Abiding Presence is going to host a blood drive. This is by appointment only, which can be made on our webpage, aplc.org. Right now, there is a blood shortage, and this precious life-saving resource is in great need. So if you have the ability to do so, please sign up online and know when you donate, it is safe and essential. On Monday, January 18th, Abiding Presence will join in a virtual walk for peace, honoring, and celebrating Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The traditional route is about 2.75 miles long. So you're invited to walk in a park or in a neighborhood, on a treadmill, at work, or even just around your bedroom. And track your steps and share your experience with us on social media and use the hashtag APLCWalksTogether. And we will total all the miles and steps and share that with you. Let's see how far we can walk for peace. There's also a prayer for you to use on your walk. Look in your emails or check out our latest videos on YouTube for that prayer. So lace up your shoes, grab a mask, walk where you are, and share your experience with others. Let's now turn our attention to the hearing of God's word. A reading from 1 Samuel chapter 3. Beginning at verse 1. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Search me. Sure guide. 
O Lord, have searched and known me when I rest and when I rise. Not a single thought I cherish is kept secret from your eyes. A reward my lips would murmur needs no speech to make it known. All I do in every venture is as done to you alone. Shall I free your spirit from your presence vanish where heights of heaven, darkest shadows hide me not for you are there. If I take the wings of morning, I'll need Even there your love will find me, hold me fast within your hand. Search me, O God, you know. brilliance of your glory darkest night is bright as day shadows flee the path before me when your wisdom lights my way you that knit my parts together knew my life before my Seize my faults, yet trust my promise far beyond my feeble worth. Search me, O oh God, you A reading from 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, beginning at verse 12. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with the price, therefore glorify God in your body. Word of God, word of life. Hey friends, I want to talk to you today about uh, where do we go when we need help? 
Sometimes uh, things happen in our lives that are uh, kind of hard to understand, uh, difficult. Um, and we've been experiencing a lot of different things lately that have been kind of hard. And sometimes it might even be hard to talk about it. When I was a kid, I would talk to my mom or my dad and, and share with them things that, that, that bothered me or that I might have been upset about. Um, and as I grew up, I found a, another person that would, would talk with me about things, a, a, a spiritual advisor. And sometimes I talked to my wife about things or my sister. Um, but we have a really neat thing at Abiding Presence called Stephen Ministers. Now, they're not named after me, even though my name is Steve. Our Stephen ministers are people that listen, and they walk with people that are having a hard time or are concerned about what's going on in their lives, or maybe they're just really sad, and they're here to listen and to talk to and to, and to share concerns with. And it's a really wonderful thing to have that in our, in our lives. So if you're having a hard time dealing with things that are going out, out and around in the world right now, I encourage you to talk to somebody, maybe a grown-up in your house. You can call the church and even talk to me. I'd be happy for that. Um, but at all times, we have something great to talk to, and that's God. So let's talk to God in prayer. Thank you, gracious God, for being with us, even when things are hard. Thank you for Stephen Ministers to walk with us and to give us somebody to talk to. In your son's name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody, let's sing the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is an Israelite truly in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called out. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This weekend in worship, we lift up Cheryl, who has answered a call saying, here I am, the servant is listening. She's being commissioned as an abiding presence Stephen minister, and she joins others that have also answered the call to follow in the way of Christ, showing Christ to others in the care that they offer. A Stephen minister cares for others that are dealing with the complexities of life. They're a healing balm for those that are struggling with health issues. They are a comforter for those that are grieving those days following the loss of a loved one. And as Cheryl begins her walk with others in the days ahead, our prayers are with her and all of our Stephen ministers as they seek God and serve others. Let us pray. Merciful God, grant that the spirit of Jesus dwell and reign in our hearts that we may enjoy your peace and know the power of your spirit and bear witness with our lives everything you have taught us and showed us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Come and see. This is what Philip says to Nathaniel when Nathaniel asks about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Come and see. But this isn't the first time that we hear this. 
Jesus says the same thing to Andrew and Simon Peter when they first meet Jesus. And this is how Jesus begins his public ministry, by calling his first disciples with a simple phrase, come and see. You see, it was common experience back then that a rabbi or a teacher would select disciples, call them to follow, and then they would all live together, and the disciples would learn from the rabbi, their teacher. The disciples would immerse themselves in the lives of their teacher and try to mimic or to emulate their teacher. And they would take all that they experienced out into the world, showing it through their words and their deeds. They would come and see. It must have been rather appealing to Philip and Nathaniel because the world that they saw around them looked rather bleak. They were seeking something. They were looking for anything. Because the land that they lived in was occupied by Rome, a powerfully oppressive regime that was advocating peace through war. And they were fleeing out into the wilderness to John the Baptist and his prophetic words, longing to hear something that would provide them with hope, hope for a better life for themselves, hope for their families, hope for true peace. And John points to Jesus. And Jesus says, come and see. Not only will they learn from this rabbi, not only will they try to emulate this teacher, Jesus says, you will see greater things than these. It got me thinking about all the things that we have seen lately. And like those disciples, I'm, I'm longing for something, anything. We've seen COVID numbers continue to climb, breaking record numbers of death and cases seemingly day after day. Hospitals are being overwhelmed. They're resorting to using gift shops and chapels to treat patients. We've seen our democracy tremble as our nation's capital was overrun. We've seen relatives angrily disagreeing on why this happened and, and, and who did it and what was it all for. And no matter what side of the aisle you may find yourself on, we are troubled we are anxious, we're worried about our future and what will happen in the days ahead. We've seen a lot and are looking for something that will provide us hope, hope for our country, hope for our families, hope for peace. Well, you've logged on to worship today. And part of my call as a pastor is to point you to Jesus. And today, Jesus says, come and see. Come and learn from Jesus, whose yoke is easy, burden is light. Come and learn from Jesus, who turns the other cheek, seeks the lost, and radically forgives. Come and learn from Jesus, who practices never-ending mercy, everlasting love, and self-giving sacrifice. Come and see who our rabbi is is. Come and see who we are called to emulate. Come and see greater things. Jesus goes on to say that these greater things, they will astonish you. And then he goes on further and says that the one who believes in me will do the works that I do, and in fact, in fact, will do greater things than these. And then in chapter 16, he tells his disciples, and Philip and Nathaniel are listening to him, and he says, do you now believe? The hour is coming when you will be scattered, each to your own home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me, and I have said these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world, you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world, says Christ. Jesus is calling us, come and see. Will we respond like Samuel with that childlike faith? Here I am, your servant is listening. Will we take up residence with our rabbi, learning from him on a daily basis as he lives within each and every one of us? Will we emulate our Lord and Savior in all that we say, in all that we do, will we seek God and serve others and experience these greater things?
because this is where I find that hope. It's in Christ Jesus. I find hope when you share Christ with those that are around you. I find hope when we seek Christ looking back at us through the eyes of our neighbors and our enemies. When we radically forgive those who have caused harm. And in doing so, experience greater things and do greater things than these. For the peace, well, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds through Christ. Come and see. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Cheryl, you have been equipped to serve as a Stephen minister through Abiding Presence Lutheran Church. Listen now to the words we find in Scripture. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Whatever you do, work at it with your whole heart as working for the Lord, not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. You have been comforted by God with the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection for you. We ask you now to join in serving our Lord and those in our congregation and neighborhood who need to be comforted. As the Lord Jesus patiently listens when you turn to him, we ask you to be a patient listener in a hurried world, to use your skills and talents to help those people whom you serve, to pray for them, and to help this congregation grow as a caring community through your own caring ministry. Are you prepared to meet these requests? Yes, with the help of God. Are you prepared to nurture the skills you have learned and use them in service to others, to support, encourage, build up, and comfort people in all their needs? Yes, with the help of God. And now we ask you, people of Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, to open your hearts to the ministry of our Stephen ministers, to pray for them, and to welcome their help as you face difficult times in life, that they may be effective servants of Christ. Are you prepared to meet this request? If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Are you prepared to serve as a Stephen minister at Abiding Presence Lutheran Church? Yes, with the help of God. Let us pray. O oh God, we ask you to take our sister Cheryl into your care. May she serve you with the power of the Holy Spirit. May she be quick to serve, patient and listening, willing to share herself with people. Keep her strong in the faith that you have given her for the sake of Jesus, who cares for all of us in every way forever. Amen. God bless you in this ministry and give you Christ's peace. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world and for all servants of the gospel, that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Let us pray. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards of earth, our home, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for the United States in the midst of civil unrest and turmoil, for our elected leaders and their families, for police officers, for peacemakers, and for the health of relationships with other nations, that God fill us with courage and strength for these days. Let us pray. Have mercy, mercy O oh God. For all who are in trouble, want, or sickness, for the countless who are suffering with COVID-19, for medical workers, for people who are hungry or homeless, imprisoned or lonely, and especially for Jean Manfred, Melissa Poor, and all that we name in our hearts, that God grant health and wholeness to a world so filled with pain, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For students, for teachers and school administrators, for parents assisting their children in homeschooling, 
and for young people who are finding a way toward graduation, that as the academic year continues, God give resilience to everyone in the search for education. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please, if you're at home, wherever you're at, where you're watching this video, share a sign of Christ's peace. Reach out with a text or a phone call, but share God's peace among one another. Don, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Shall be peace be with you. Peace shall be. Like the disciples, we are learning all we can from our teacher, Jesus, trying day by day to emulate our Lord in all that we say and do. And we are seeing and doing greater things, like bringing food and gifts and prayers lifted up for those in need, new ministries and educational opportunities to seek God at abiding presence. One of the ways this is possible is because you offer your financial gifts so graciously. Thank you for your continued generosity. Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child, with arms wide open. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love, through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into the darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, Life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 
And may God, the Creator, strengthen you, Jesus, the Beloved, fill you, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.